couple of days ago I made a video on YouTube called Programming is Hard and as I'm being a very small YouTube channel, very recent one, it's getting a lot of traction, very nice views and very nice comments. And I would like to make this video today in con continuity to that. So if we go to, to this actual YouTube, cha YouTube video, Programming is Hard, we can see a bunch of very positive comments by people like, you know, thank you, Alex, blah, 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 I needed to hear this, etc, etc, etc. The main reason why uh, people are leaving such comments is because, you know, they've been shaken up a little bit and uh, a reality was kind of presented to them and they just needed, uh, sometimes we just need to hear a word or two to get back into the into reality, right? So let me show you why you're failing your programming journey. Let me see, let me tell you why you're procrastinating and, and, and just jumping from video to video. Let me show you. If we switch to the developer roadmap over here, right? Uh, if I just go to my main screen. If we switch to this developer roadmap website, which roadmap.sh, here we can see a bunch of, bunch of different types of things. And um, we can also see here in the role-based uh, role roadmaps, we can see front and back end and full stack. So when some of you come and tell me, hey, Alex, I've started this full stack course, you, basically what you're telling me is that you have started with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, NPM, React, Tailwind, GitHub, Git, Node.js, Postgres, Redis, J J JSON, JSON Web Tokens, RESTful API, Linux Basics, servers, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's ridiculous. It's just, it, it's nonsense. It doesn't matter if you bought the course or if you found it. <clears throat> uh, learning all of these skills to even memorize these terms would take you a month just to memorize all of the terms. Ansible, tele Terraform, uh, uh, code is a <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera, right? So we can all agree here that even if I make it in a very... Uh, parody way as I just did, that is absolutely in insanely stupid, right? If we go back a little bit here, then let's basically talk about how, what would be the realistic approach to learn at least web development, but any other sort of development. Well, a realistic approach, of course, would be that you forget that full stack exists because full stack means learning these two things, a little bit of this, 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 a little bit of everything. Also this. So full stack is not just these two things. Full stack is half of these boxes combined. Instead of that, you start with the front end. If we're talking about web development, you want to start with the front end. But even this list that you can see here is mind-blowingly complex. As you can see, if we just scroll through this very large scroll, Memorizing even that these things exist would again take you a month. Just memorizing these words, not even understanding what they mean. So how do you actually start and what do you focus on? Keep in mind that I spent five and a half years learning at the, uh, teaching at the bootcamp. I was one of the 30 out of 850 uh, mentors on the platform. I was top 30, one of the experts uh, from 2016 to 2021. So I'm going to share my feedback with you, what I've seen with around 160 students that I mentored over five years. As you can see, I've also worked at the technical uh, DTU at the Danish University. This is the biggest technical university in the whole Scandinavia. So the reason why I'm saying this is just so you understand that I do have some uh, experience here, so I'm not talking out of my butthole, right? Okay, so going back to this list, right? So first thing that you have to do is you have to learn the basics of HTML. Then you have to learn writing semantic HTML. So these are the two things, the only two things, not even these three things. These three things are going to take time. So first things that you want to do is learn the basics. You don't need to buy any courses. In fact, I urge you not to do it. You don't need to spend any money. You only need to invest your time. V3 schools, MDN, WebDev, these are absolutely insane really good resources, amazing resources. I made some courses myself as well. Uh, you can check them out on my channel. It's not gonna make much difference. If you much rather would like to hear me speak or someone doing a video presentation, feel free to find them. But either way, I would not even recommend my own stuff. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to this amazing resource, probably arguably one of the best resources for learning on the internet and just follow this. Go to the introduction, basics, blah, 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 right? and focus on building certain things. Then you go back to this again, and you focus on writing semantic HTML. So you wanna be able to write some HTML. When you're able to write some HTML, you go to CSS and you learn the basics, right? You learn these basics, V3 schools, web dev. What are the basics? Basically, when it comes to CSS, 
the most important things to learn are the following and in the same order. First, learning the selectors and then CSS box model, display property, position property, CSS units, Let me just expand this, flexbox, grid, and almost only with this, you'll be able to make insanely good products. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. When it, when it comes to CSS, uh, Flexbox and Grid, there are two best resources you can probably use to learn this. It's called Flexbox Frog, something froggy. So the resource is flexbo flexboxfroggy.com. This is very interactive visual representation of this. So you can see as you type things in the, uh, here in the left, they will be displayed here in the right. So this task was to move the frog from left to the right end of the screen. If, if we actually uh, refresh this, uh, they used to have, actually it's here. You can see you want to learn CSS grid over here, right? You want to click grid garden and then this takes you to the CSS grid. So you can es essentially also learn the CSS grid, right? It's basically this one in here. So once you learn these things, you are practically very eloquent already when it comes to CSS. Now, of course, next things would be a responsive design, which is essentially media queries, right? Media queries, where do you learn it? You go here, you search for media or responsive design, you click here and almost this resource almost entirely is going to be sufficient to uh, get uh, pretty okay, I believe, with responsive design. What is a responsive design? Just essentially in simple words, making sure that uh, your website works on mobile and tablet, etc., etc. right? So after you're done with this, what it is that you do then? And this is going to take you probably a couple of months. Do you just move to JavaScript? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What you do then is you go to Google and type free CSS templates or CSS templates and you find any of the resources. You click on one and you essentially uh, find something that you like. Uh, you find some template that you actually like, something that fits your, so, oh, actually I like this. So what do you do? You click on it and you see if there's some preview. Can I preview this template? Yeah, live view, here it is. And then you see how this looks like and you say, okay, now let me build this myself. So you go ahead, take a screenshot of this page. You do this. Copy that, and you go to Draw.io. Draw.io is the best friend of yours, it's something that you should be using continuously. So this tool has to be opened 24 seven. If not, at the very least, use pen and paper on your table. So you, you do this, what do you do? What is the next step? Now here you essentially need to define your HTML markup. So before you write any HTML, you have to figure out how you're gonna conceptualize these things. So we can see here if can I draw or something. I said, where is the where is the where is the pen? I wanna I wanna I just want to to to, to basic. Did it, can I just arrows flowchart? No. Essentially, let's let me actually take this into paint. So if I get this into paint, the next thing you do is you define your HTML markup. So you say, okay, I can see that this is gonna be one div. This thing here. Then this might be another div, this might be another div, and then this parent is gonna be Flexbox. Then I see that this is gonna be some nav HTML5 element, and then in the nav, I'm gonna have a logo, and then this, is, this might be an unordered list with uh, four list items. So not to prolong, this is not a guide about HTML CSS, this is just to tell you how do you do this, how do you practice this, so before you get started with coding it and then styling it with CSS, you need to define your markup. Once you do that, you of course then start doing it. Once you get yourself to a point where you can build these templates effortlessly, that's gonna mean that you have learned CSS and HTML on a good level. What can you do then while you're learning other things? Then you can go to fiverr.com or any other freelance website and search for HTML and CSS gigs. You can do them for 10 euros, 50 euros, 5 euros, even offer your services for free just for the sake of getting your hands dirty while you're learning 7 billion other things that you saw that you have to learn anyway as the time goes by. So 
Already with HTML and CSS, you can do so much. You can deliver so much value. I will personally pay you a few bucks like this, 20, 30, 50 dollars to do some work for programming network. If you can get yourself to a point where you can write these things. Once you feel confident with HTML and CSS with this thing, then you can start learning Tailwind CSS because the Tailwind essentially is just plain CSS utility based library that it, where it combines various CSS classes to help you write it faster, but you still need to know CSS. Right? Incredibly, incredibly important, right? So at this point in time, when you are after a couple of months of HTML and CSS, you feel confident, you're building these templates, you're making some money, you're selling them. Now it's time for you to start learning JavaScript. You're learning JavaScript because you want to make these static pages now dynamic. You know, I want to submit a form. I want to make this button clickable. I want to make the whole page interactive. I want to log in. I want to talk to a backend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we go back to the developer roadmap, these things, this, this, and this, this trinity of web development, as I call it, is the most important thing. Then you can move into the direction of Git, storing your code base somewhere on a remote server and stuff, but that is absolutely irrelevant at that point because you're still working alone, you're still learning, you have nobody to collaborate on your code with. So learning these tools ahead of time is absolutely useless because again, you're not working with anybody. Of course, this is super important how does the internet work? What does what happens when I type the URL in this browser and press enter? All of these are very important. So I would say it's going to take you a couple of months just to stay on these four points in here. If you learn these fundamentals really well, if you focus, if you're patient, then you your foundational knowledge is going to be so well that everything else, this whole thing beneath as it goes is going to just propagate very, very fast. If you fail to, to learn these basics properly, you're going to fail miserably on every single other point. Because as you keep going down, there's a lot of these terms that you have absolutely cannot even conceptualize what they are. Look at all of these modern frameworks. Uh, block element modifier, some CSS patterns and stuff. Of course, you don't have to learn all of this, nor you will. But there's a lot of stuff that you will fall uh, victim to. Um, so going back to my full camera. So this is why you're failing your programming journey. You're failing your programming journey because as you can see from the delivered presentation here, you're rushing through, you don't know fundamentals, you don't know the basics. You are just trying to, to you know, uh, brute force through something that you can't brute force through and then you're suffering along the way you know along the way just as you're going you keep making shortcut by shortcut by shortcut you copy paste some stuff it works you move on but you have absolutely no idea why it works why it doesn't work etc etc so please focus on these fundamentals go back learn things properly and 100% 100% not only that you're gonna learn you can already start making some money putting yourself out there with minimal amount of skills even if it means working for free to gain some experience joining some projects online uh, you know joining my stream trying to help whatever it takes and I, I guarantee you that you're gonna see a lot greater results than, than you have today anyway I wish you best I hope some of the, these tips were useful and uh, I'll see you guys soon in the live stream peace out everybody